The remotely operated vehicle camera swept across the Yorktown's hangar deck, revealing something that should not exist. 83 years after the Battle of Midway, deep beneath the Pacific, an SBD Dauntless dive bomber sat armed with a thousand-pound bomb, still mounted to its fuselage. According to every official Navy record, all ordnance was jettisoned before the carrier sank. Yet here was proof that the wartime reports captured only part of the story. This single discovery would force naval historians to rewrite their understanding of the Yorktown's final hours. In April 2024, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's remotely operated vehicles penetrated the USS Yorktown's hangar deck for the first time since June 1942. What they found defied everything historians thought they knew about the carrier's last moments. The cameras revealed at least three Douglas SBD Dauntless dive bombers resting on the hangar deck. But one aircraft stopped researchers cold. The bomber remained fully armed, its thousand-pound bomb secured in the release cradle beneath the fuselage. The ordnance sat exactly as it had been loaded for combat operations 83 years earlier. This discovery contradicted fundamental assumptions about the Yorktown's sinking. Captain Elliot Buckmaster's damage control reports clearly stated that all heavy equipment, including bombs and torpedoes, had been jettisoned to prevent the ship from listing further. The official Navy records described frantic efforts to lighten the carrier after torpedo strikes left it dead in the water. Yet forensic examination of the armed bomber revealed details that painted a different picture. The bomb's serial numbers remained visible, etched into the metal casing. The mounting hardware showed no signs of attempted removal. Most telling, the aircraft's position suggested it had been deliberately secured rather than abandoned in panic. The bomber's location within the hangar provided crucial context. It sat near the aft section, away from the primary damage control areas where crews fought flooding. This placement suggested the aircraft had been moved there intentionally, possibly to clear flight deck space for other operations. Analysis of the bomb itself revealed manufacturing details that helped researchers piece together the timeline. The ordnance matched specifications for bombs loaded aboard the Yorktown during its rushed resupply at Pearl Harbor in late May 1942. These weapons were intended for the strike missions that helped cripple the Japanese fleet at Midway. The discovery raised immediate accuracy questions about wartime damage reports. If this bomber remained armed, what other details had been missed or misreported in the chaos of battle? The implications extended beyond simple record-keeping errors. Naval historians had long relied on Captain Buckmaster's after-action reports to understand the Yorktown's final hours. These documents described systematic efforts to jettison heavy equipment, including aircraft and ordnance, to keep the damaged carrier afloat. The reports formed the foundation for decades of scholarship about damage control procedures and the carrier's heroic struggle to survive. The armed bomber suggested a more complex reality. Perhaps some ordnance could not be safely removed in the time available. Maybe certain aircraft were deemed too valuable to sacrifice, even as the ship fought for survival. Or possibly the damage control efforts were more chaotic than official reports indicated. The forensic evidence pointed to deliberate decisions rather than oversight. The bomber's secure positioning and intact mounting system suggested crew members had made calculated choices about what to preserve and what to discard. These decisions reflected priorities that were not captured in the official record. The discovery also highlighted the compressed timeline of the Yorktown's final battle. Between the initial Japanese air attacks on June 4th and the submarine torpedo strikes on June 6th, damage control teams worked around the clock to save their ship. In that frantic period, some details inevitably escaped official documentation. For researchers studying World War II naval operations, the armed bomber represented more than a historical curiosity. 
It provided tangible evidence of the split-second decisions that determined whether ships lived or died in combat. The forensic details preserved on the ocean floor offered insights that no written report could capture. The armed bomber was not the only discovery that challenged official records. Deep inside the Yorktown's number two elevator shaft, Noah's cameras revealed something extraordinary, a hand-painted mural stretching 42 feet across the bulkhead. The artwork, titled A Chart of the Cruises of the USS Yorktown, depicted the carrier's voyage routes across the Pacific in vivid detail. What made this discovery remarkable was not just its survival after eight decades underwater, but what it revealed about operations that never appeared in Navy records. The mural showed mission routes that did not match declassified intelligence reports. Painted in careful detail by an unknown crew member, the chart included coordinates and destinations that suggested the Yorktown had conducted classified operations beyond its documented missions. Some routes led to areas of the Pacific where no official Navy presence was recorded. Forensic examination of the mural's paint layers revealed it had been updated multiple times during the carrier's service. Different colors and brush techniques indicated various crew members had contributed to the artwork, adding new routes as the ship's operational history expanded. The most recent additions appeared to date from early 1942, just months before the carrier's final battle. The preservation of the mural defied expectations. Paint typically deteriorates rapidly in seawater, yet the deep ocean environment had protected this artwork remarkably well. The cold temperatures and lack of light at the wreck site had slowed chemical breakdown, leaving the colors still visible to modern cameras. What the mural revealed about the Yorktown's operations raised questions about wartime intelligence activities. Several painted routes led to Japanese-controlled waters where no official combat operations were documented. These paths suggested reconnaissance missions or special operations that remained classified long after the war ended. The chart also showed supply routes and rendezvous points that did not appear in standard naval histories. The crew member who painted these details had access to operational information that went beyond typical ship's company knowledge. This suggested the mural's creator held a position with access to classified navigation data. Researchers compared the mural's routes with recently declassified intelligence documents from the National Archives. The comparison revealed gaps in the official record where the Yorktown's movements were not fully documented. The painted chart filled some of these blanks, providing evidence of missions that had been omitted from public histories. The discovery highlighted how much of World War II naval history remained incomplete. Official records focused on major battles and strategic operations, but smaller missions and intelligence activities often went undocumented. The mural preserved details that would have been lost forever without this underwater time capsule. The artwork also revealed the crew's pride in their ship's service. The careful attention ongoing updates showed sailors who wanted to document their contribution to the war effort. They created a permanent record of the Yorktown's travels, not knowing it would survive their ship by more than 80 years. Among the most puzzling discoveries on the Yorktown's hangar deck was a 1940 Ford Woody station wagon, its wooden panels still intact after decades underwater. The vehicle bore markings reading Ship Service Navy, suggesting it belonged to the carrier's official transportation fleet. The car's presence contradicted Captain Buckmaster's documented orders during the ship's final hours. As the Yorktown listed heavily to port after torpedo strikes, Buckmaster ordered his crew to jettison all heavy equipment to prevent capsizing. Aircraft, guns, and spare parts were thrown overboard in desperate attempts to save the ship. Yet the Ford remained secured in its position, apparently untouched by the frantic jettisoning efforts. The vehicle's tie-down chains were still in place, suggesting deliberate preservation rather than oversight. This detail provided crucial insight into the crew's priorities during those desperate hours. 
Forensic examination of the car's position revealed it had been carefully secured against the hangar's starboard bulkhead. The placement kept it away from the primary flooding areas while maintaining access to the vehicle if needed. This positioning suggested strategic thinking rather than random abandonment. The Ford's survival raised questions about the hierarchy of decisions during damage control operations. While aircraft and weapons were sacrificed to save the ship, someone deemed this vehicle worth preserving. The decision reflected calculations about what equipment might be needed if the Yorktown survived its ordeal. Historical records indicate the car likely belonged to Rear Admiral Jack Fletcher or to Captain Buckmaster for official duties while docked in foreign ports. Senior officers used such vehicles to conduct business with local authorities and coordinate with other naval units. The Ford represented mobility and command capability that could not be easily replaced. The vehicle's condition provided evidence of the flooding patterns within the hangar deck. While the wooden panels showed water damage, the metal frame remained structurally sound. The preservation suggested the hangar had flooded gradually rather than catastrophically, giving the crew time to secure valuable equipment. Analysis of the Ford's registration markings helped researchers trace its service history. The vehicle had been assigned to the Yorktown during its 1941 refit, making it part of the ship's equipment for nearly a year before the final battle. This extended service period explained why the crew might have prioritized its preservation. The car's discovery also illuminated the practical challenges of carrier operations in 1942. Naval vessels operating far from home ports needed ground transportation for essential duties. The Ford represented a crucial link between ship and shore that could not be easily sacrificed, even in desperate circumstances. These forensic discoveries prove that wartime records captured only fragments of the complete story. The armed bomber, hidden mural, and preserved Ford reveal decisions and operations that never made it into official reports. Each artifact challenges assumptions about the Yorktown's final hours and the crew's actions under extreme pressure. The truth about this legendary carrier lies not just in historical documents, but in the physical evidence preserved beneath Pacific waters. Subscribe to see how other famous wrecks are rewriting naval history.